this all reminded me of Jesus' exhortation in the Gospel of Matthew with the parable of the ten maidens, which we just read, and how fire fell asleep and burned up all their lamp oil in the darkness as they were waiting for the parousia, the second coming. Five maidens trimmed their lamps and were prepared and were prepared. We talked about this last Sunday, I believe. And were prepared for when the bridegroom shows up. These two different yet similar exhortations remind me of two things. Two things we need to take away for today. First of all, we're children of light. Don't be confused. Don't be confused. We're children of the light. Children of the day. Children of Christ. That we're not children of the night. We're not children of the darkness. We're not children of the dark side. We're not children of the enemy. And as such, we must not be fooled. We must stay awake. We must be prepared. In other words, and point number two is, we must be prepared. We must not slumber and fall asleep at the wheel. We must be vigilant and spiritually awake. And so Paul tells his faithful at Thessalonica that since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Let us be awake and ready, prepared as it were, and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we're asleep or whether we're awake, we may live with him. And here's the poignant point to me. It goes on to say, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. Church, that is so critical. <clears throat> in our faith walk, in our journey with Christ. That we remind one another from time to time who we are. We do that by testimony. We do that by making a phone call. We do that by coming together in worship and gathering around this parking, parking lot and reminding one another of our faithfulness so that they in turn might be faithful as well. That's what this means. This is not near as much about you as it is about your neighbor next door and the car right next to you. Everybody look to your neighbor right now and say, bless you in the name of the Lord. I'm not a child of the darkness and neither are you. For we're children of light. We're God's children. We're the family of God. He's saying, keep on doing what you're doing, church. But, but, do not fall asleep. Do not fail to trim your lamps while you wait. Be prepared and do not become spiritually lazy or apathetic or unprepared and find yourselves out trying to purchase some oil when there's none to be purchased. Trying to purchase a ticket for heaven because you slowly became children of sleep, children of night, and children of darkness. 
because we've fallen asleep at the wheel. In order for our oil to last, we must be wise and we must trim our lamps. We must be prepared and we must stay prepared. Staying in the light and being prepared for when Christ does return, whenever that may be. Now hear me when I say this. This is not to be, meant to be condemnation. It surely, it surely is not meant for you. <laughs> because you're the faithful. You're here. You guys remind me of the five bride maids that, that trimmed their lamps and were prepared. Even if they went to sleep, they were prepared when they were awakened at the coming of the bridegroom. But I've noticed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic how some have fallen into the habit of not attending whatever type of service is available to them whenever or wherever. Our habits are being reformed, church. Listen to me. And I would contend that if not careful we become like the five maidens who did not trim their lamps, who were not prepared, <clears throat> and who do not continue in preparation day after day, who wandered into the night and fell asleep unprepared and found themselves maidens of the night, hearing these words from the Lord himself as they pleaded to be let into the wedding feast. When Jesus said, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. I don't, wake up. I don't know about you, but I can't think of anything more disheartening in my entire life than to be standing there at the portals of heaven and hear my Lord say, depart from me, for I did not know you. Why have you slumbered and took me for granted? Why have you not stayed children of the light? Why have you not stayed prepared for my coming? I told you I was coming. I told you, Sam, that I was coming. And when I come and how I come is my business. I only ask you to be prepared. Trim your lamps, church. Jesus ends this story with these words, and I want to end my message with these words to you. Keep awake. <laughs> Stay awake. Don't fall asleep at the wheel, church. Yeah, thank you. Stay awake. I had an old buddy of mine, my first appointment, Every Sunday he would come in with his wife and they would sit about uh, uh, about uh, 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 closer to the back than the front. And he sat on the end. And just about the time I started preaching my sermon, that head would fall back, that mouth would drop open, and he'd snore just like he hadn't been asleep in, 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 in five or six days. His wife would get so upset with her, she, she would get a creak in her elbow, punching him in the, in the ribs to wake him up. Finally, one day I told her, I said, I said let, let him sleep. It might be the best sleep he gets all week long. But church, let us not be asleep at the wheel when it comes to our, our, our spiritual being and being prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us be ready. Let us be ready every day. Let us live every day so that we are willing and ready to die for Christ. No matter what's going on around us. Who cares what's going on around us? Anything that draws us away from our Lord and our God is just not worth being a part of. And so Jesus ends the story with these words, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Well, I don't know about you, preacher, but I'm tired of waiting.
When's he coming? I'm tired of waiting. Well, so what? <laughs> I don't believe God cares whether you're tired of waiting or not. He just said, be ready and be prepared. And so both lessons today focus on our being prepared, knowing who we are in Christ, and behaving and behaving as if we know by staying faithful in the little things as well as the larger things. We must so live our lives today as if today could be the last day. Whether we're called home early or whether we be fortunate enough to be around when we hear the cry of the archangel and the trumpet of the Lord and see him coming again in the eastern sky, riding a great white horse, coming to get us. Coming to get us and take us home. Here's my question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are your lamps trimmed? And are you adhering to the disciplines of our faith and being faithful in our worship and life's living in our relationship with, uh, uh, with God through Christ and with the aid and in the power of the Holy Spirit? If you're feeling a little bit sleepy, if you feel like you've been on this life's journey a little bit too long and you're feeling a little bit sleepy, then here's my advice to you. Pull over the side of the road and refresh yourselves. Get in the Word. Get into your prayer closet. Come to church on Sunday and listen Wednesday nights at the musings of the pastor and join Lucy's joy group. Do whatever you need to do to trim your oil and be prepared. Pull over to the side of the road and don't fall asleep at the wheel. Can I get an amen? Woo, that was good. Everybody say amen. <coughs> We have an assurance in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ <laughs> that we will join him when the hour and the day comes that he comes to get us. And church, I look forward to that. I look forward to looking around and seeing your smiling faces all standing there in line with me, all in the group, the children of light, the children of the day, the children of God just waiting to just waiting to be ushered in but in the meantime we must be prepared and not fall asleep at the wheel God bless you let's end our service today with one of my favorite hymns and one of Susanna's, uh, Susanna's as well uh, no, bless Mike's not working Mike's not working she says Mike's not working the battery must be dead. No, my, mine, sorry, mine is it. Your mic's not working, yeah. that's why I was going to give you mine. Oh, okay. Okay. Here's my suggestion to you. Technical difficulties. Read the words of blessed assurance. And let it minister to you and give you hope. Let it minister to you to prepare you for whenever and whatever time God chooses to come and take us home. <clears throat> Amen. And may God bless you. May his countenance rise up upon you, bring you peace today, now, and forevermore. May you be filled with the love of Christ, the power of the communion of the Holy Spirit, the love of God. Go and encourage. Leave here today and go encourage someone. Someone to stay prepared. And to not fall asleep at the wheel. God bless you and I love you. Until we meet again. <laughs>